Today I'm going to show you how I overwinter my Boston ferns and geraniums so that I can save money and not have to rebuy them next season or so that you can already start with a bigger plant come next spring. It is now Columbus Day weekend, and this is about the time of year where I start um, trying to get any last minute plants into the ground, and anything that I want to overwinter, I have to start bringing them into the basement or into the shed. And so this morning when we woke up, there was a light layer of frost on the lawn. So that lit a sense of urgency and made to get these things done. So today I'm going to show you what my process is for overwintering some Boston ferns as well as some geraniums. Now my Boston ferns, um, these here, I have two in my hanging baskets and I have two in some urn planters in my patio near my shed. And back in May, so at some point in the spring, I had bought one really large hanger of Boston ferns and I divided it into four containers. And it took a few weeks for them to pick up, but now they look absolutely beautiful. And I wanna keep them going into next season so that I don't have to rebuy them. And I'm already starting with larger plants. I have overwintered Boston ferns before. A couple of years ago, I overwintered them and I brought them into my basement and I'm gonna show you how I do that and they turned out beautifully. The next spring, I was even able to divide them and I initially had them in just the urns. I divided them and I was able to have my two urns full of ferns as well as these hanging baskets. Then last summer, uh, at the end of the summer or in the fall, I should say, last fall, those ferns that had already made it a whole year with me and had gone through an overwintering, I took and because the containers were heavy, I decided, well, I'm just going to try putting them in the shed because it's a shorter route to have to carry the containers. Well, the shed is really cold. Um, it's basically just providing a shield from some wind, but really it's not much warmer than being outside because it's unheated. So the shed is not going to be a good option to store them for the winter because you know, the last ones died. So now these new ones that I just replaced this spring, I want to keep them going. So I'm going to bring them in and let me show you what I do. And here are my two beautiful ferns that I have in my urn planters. Now these are plastic urns, but they have aged enough in the past couple of years that they're almost looking like cast iron or something. And I'm really loving them. These are just cheap plastic urns from like the Home Depot. And I think they were like maybe $12 a piece, but I digress. So these urns have to make it inside. George isn't home. I was kind of hoping he would be because they're really heavy, but I'm just gonna have to do this on my own. <laughs> First thing I do when I'm bringing these in is I wanna make sure that I kind of just inspect them to make sure nothing's made a nest um, or is stowing away in these ferns before I bring them in my house. So I just kind of look through and make sure nothing's hiding in the soil um, and just kind of give it a good look. some acorns that the squirrels are storing away. That's it, these look pretty good. I'm gonna go check the uh, hangers um, that I had the ferns in as well, and then I'm ready to bring them in the basement. Now that I've inspected the ferns to make sure nothing was hiding in the foliage, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a nice good spray with the hose, just to make sure that there aren't any spiders or mites or anything on the foliage that I'll be bringing inside. So I wanna make sure to get anything like that off. So I'm gonna spray the top and bottoms of the foliage and I'm gonna do it to both these urn planters and my hangers. And I'll let them hang out and dry and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I do to my geraniums to get them prepped. And here are my three potted geraniums that I'm gonna bring inside and I'm gonna overwinter for the second time this year. I was able to overwinter them successfully last year and I'm gonna try it again this year. Now there are a couple of different methods that people use when it comes to overwintering geraniums. One of the more popular methods is to dig up your plant, clean off any additional soil from the roots and store them as a bare root plant 
in either a paper grocery bag such as this or a cardboard box. Then you would just seal it up and keep them in a cool, dark place, essentially letting them go dormant for the winter months. You wouldn't have to water them or do anything additional. In the spring, you would just repot them up with some new potting soil, put them out, water them, and they would start putting out new foliage and new buds for the following growing season. However, that seems like a little bit of work and I like to keep things easy. And because I already have these in pots, I would rather not have to remove them and just keep them in the pots. Do whatever works for you. This actually worked well for me last year, so I'm just gonna continue to do what I was doing and um, I'm gonna bring them inside and treat them like a house plant. But before I do that, I am going to first clean off any of these spent blooms and I'm gonna clean off any foliage that looks like it's yellowed, gotten brown or you know whatnot. You wanna make sure that you just clean it up so that you bring in a generally healthy plant and you're not harboring any additional diseases on the foliage. That's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now. I'm gonna get these prepped to bring inside and then I'll show you the next step that I take. Anytime that you bring plants from the outdoors inside, you want to both clean the foliage and treat the soil. So before we had sprayed our ferns, we had sprayed them with water from the hose and we cleaned off the foliage on top and on bottom. But you also want to treat the soil because there could be some kind of larva in there, spider mites, fungus gnats that you want to treat. You don't want to create an infestation in your home, especially if you have other plants already inside. Um, this can get out of control pretty quickly. So a couple of steps you can take are um, number one, you could repot them. You can put them in fresh, clean soil before you bring them inside, and that would take care of that. Um, or you could also spray them with some insecticidal soap, both the foliage and the soil. You can pick this up at any nursery or box store. You can even order it on Amazon. This one here is by Bonide, and it says it kills insects in minutes. And so this you can use for spider mites, white fly, aphids, and so forth. You can also make your own insecticidal soap really easily. All you need is a recycled spray bottle, or any kind of spray bottle, fill it with water and put one very small drop of dish soap. And there's your insecticidal soap. And then you just spray the foliage and the soil. And another method that I recently learned of to kill any fungus gnats that might be in your soil is with hydrogen peroxide. So I have this bottle of hydrogen peroxide. The strength on the hydrogen peroxide should only be about 3% and that's what this one is. I got this one here at Walmart. And what you do is you mix one part hydrogen peroxide, three parts water. And with that solution, you would water your soil and that will kill off any potential eggs or larva that might be in your soil for fungus gnats. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up some of my peroxide and I'm gonna water my geraniums with them and then I'll be ready to bring them in. My geraniums are now in my basement along with my Boston ferns and they're going to be sitting in this corner on the table by this sunny window. This window gets morning sun until about uh, one or two in the afternoon so they'll get a good six to eight hours of sun a day and I will come down here and water them every seven to 10 days or so, but you always wanna stick your finger in the soil and check for moisture. If you stick your finger all the way down um, is the best way to tell because sometimes the first one or two inches of soil will be dry, but there's actually moisture down below where the roots are. So you don't wanna overwater. And the geranium's the same. You're going to check the soil see if they need water and you would water them accordingly. Now they won't bloom as profusely throughout the winter months as they do outside in the summer. The plant sort of needs time to recharge and you will get some yellowing and some leaf drop um, here and there, but nothing to be concerned about. The plant will still be alive. It's just going through a resting phase. And then next spring, once your temperatures are above 50 degrees, then you can start 
um, getting them acclimated to the outdoor weather, bringing them out a few hours at a time until you can eventually just leave them out for the season. Geraniums love temperatures between 50 and 55 degrees. So anywhere that you plan to store your Boston ferns or your geraniums, you wanna make sure that they are in that 50 degree range. Ferns also love humidity and moisture. So on your same watering schedule, if you have a regular spray bottle with some water, you can just go ahead and mist your ferns to give them some of that moisture that they love while they're being overwintered. You'll know that your ferns need moisture because they'll start getting brown and more leaf drop. Well, that's my process for overwintering my Boston ferns and my geraniums. Hopefully I taught you something today. And if you, you know, want to try it, go ahead, give it a shot. I mean, what do you have to lose? You could actually save yourself some money by having plants to start with next year that are already bigger and off to a head start. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we'll see you soon.